Okay, so we're going to move on to my next guest, who's a very successful author and has been published in more than 50 countries around the world. She's sold over uh, a million books and has been translated into 30 different languages. Her latest book, Love from Heaven, went straight into number one in the book charts, both here and in the UK. She claims that everybody has a guardian angel and that she can see and talk to angels. Would you welcome, please, Lorna Byrne, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I haven't seen you for a little while. No, it, it has been a while, so um, I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, it's good to you. see you, as always, yeah. and thanks for coming in yeah. to see us. Um, we get straight down to business because the new okay. book is out, and like I say, it's number one in the UK, it's number one in Ireland, yeah. so congratulations. Yeah. Thank I mean, it's you. enormously Thank popular. You. People love what you write about and what you say. Um, and in the book, it's called Love from Heaven, you talk about having been to heaven. It's a place yeah. that a lot yeah. of people have thought about, prayed about, uh, considered but yeah. I've never been to, so can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, heaven is a, a place where when, when you go, when you physically die, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, and and it, is, it is real. Yeah. You know. Um, but you have the unique perspective of having yeah, been there while alive. And, and any time it has happened to me, it's either the angel Michael or sometimes the angel a Amen that would reach into my body and take my soul. Yeah. And where are you uh, when they do that? physically for um, you? Sometimes, I'm usually on my own. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they might say to me, you know, you're to go for a walk or you're to sit down somewhere yeah. like that. Sometimes I could be at home in my own house. Sure. You know, um, it could literally be anywhere, really. And do they... Any do part of the world, of course, I'm afraid. Uh, that you might be. Yeah. And do, yeah. they, do, do they, do you see them coming to talk to you and to say you're going to heaven yeah. there, Lorna? Yeah, I see the angel physically as I see you see there. You. Literally that And that obviously. physical, and it will stand right in front of me. Yeah. And it, it's like at that moment um, when it reaches in, it's, its hand always seems to, because no one has ever really asked me this question yeah. before, its hand seems to really get bigger. Yeah. in that sense yeah. and the angel seems to really like you know lighten up as if loads of light is coming from from the angel yes. and the angel gives a human appearance yes and at that moment when it reaches in and takes my soul it's like it takes my breath away i don't feel my body or anything like that i'm gone from it yes and do, um, you, do you see your, your body? Is it like a that transcendental meditation type thing where you no, can see the body? or is it it's... Um, I've actually never really thought about it, yeah. so now I have to but actually is it, is think. But is it a state of mind or are you on a... No, it's, it's physical. It's, it's physical. It's physical. It's physical. So, yeah. okay, so, so they bring you to heaven. Yeah, and sometimes it depends. Um, one of the last times what I've written about in, in, in the book, yes. um, Love from Heaven, was when I was brought there and I just saw a sea of souls. What and does a sea of souls look like? Um, it's actually incredible. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's, it's like in one sense, like all little children in that sense, but they're just so perfect and, and they're so beautiful. And are they faces or? Um, they no, you just, there, there was millions of them. Yeah. You know, so imagine looking at, at millions and, and they all seem so close together right. and moving around yeah. and they are so bright. And then seeing some angels, guardian angels, walking in, in among them. And I was told to pay attention and watch one particular guardian angel. And as it walked through the Sea of Souls, then it just stopped cutting the story short. And it was like, you know, one, the soul and the guardian angel meeting for the first time, they embraced. I can't describe that okay. embrace. It was like yeah. intertwining and just seeing, seeing that love. And then another part of it was when the guardian angel took the soul and went to, that's let, the, only, the only way I could call it humanly for people to understand would be like the throne of God. The guardian angel brought the soul to be in front of God. And you were witnessing all of this. And I was watching this. It was like as if maybe I was, you know, standing there where the camera was. Yes. And that close as a witness it to was it, it was that close okay. and and just watching um, the soul in front of God and God embracing the soul and because you have to remember every soul 
is that speck of light of God. Yeah. You know, that, so you, that so you, spark. So you saw God then? I did. And I, to me, you seem shocked. I am but shocked because I always think that, the, that, that you think or pray or it's a spiritual or a soulful thing, yeah, a religious experience. I, but I've I never heard of anyone physically. I don't seeing. know why, why this happens to me. Yeah. I don't know why God has allowed, allowed this. Yeah. But at the moment, I'm to share it with the world, to tell everyone. Yeah. And so tell me about now, now that you've met him. Like, what what is God? What does sorry? What is it? What does God look like? Um, to me, very beautiful. Yeah. He gives a male appearance always. He's never given a female appearance. Is um, he old or no, no? He always looks young. And the most incredible thing about God is that he is so overwhelming. It's like the the love that comes from him is mm. so overwhelming that that power kind of makes you feel in one sense you want to run and hide but yet you're so excited you know your your own soul is just so full of joy and wants to run to god mm. but yet on the other hand you're kind of a little yeah. afraid it's all it's it's all awesome. it's, like, yeah. it's like the proper it's, sense it's, of the word it's, it's awesome. like it's like that yeah and you did know. you talk to god not there did he talk time. to you but you have not, before not not there in in God's library was one one occasion, um, he gave out to me for doing exactly what I said a second ago, yeah. running and hiding, okay. because of being so overwhelmed. Let's talk a little bit about the some of the pe the, the points in the book that you make, Lorna. About uh, you talk about physical appearance. Yeah. And uh, what yeah. what 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 did you to say about that? Um, I think what you're talking about is self love. Yeah, self love exactly. Self self love. Um, most of us, I would say 99% of the population, we have forgotten how to love ourselves. Okay. Um, we, we see ourselves as you know, inadequate, imperfect in all of those ways, mm -hmm. instead of seeing ourselves as, as, you know, as good, as beautiful, as perfect. And, and we have lost the credibility of loving ourselves. You have to remember you know, you can't love anyone else unless you love yourself. You only yeah. can love someone else, whatever amount you love yourself. It's like when Jesus said, you know, um, love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. That's what he was saying. He was, he was telling us. So where did the angels come into that message then? Um, I think it was when I was about maybe five years of age, okay. when I was told that um, I was not just going to see the angels physically, but that God wanted me to see something else. Yeah. And that was the powerful force of love. Yeah. And um, to see it coming from a person. And love comes from the soul. Mm -hmm. And that's why love comes from heaven. And each and every baby born in the world is 100% pure love. You say that about, as you talk about yeah. younger people, children, you say they're becoming more cold-hearted instead of yeah. more loving. That's a terribly sad uh, thing it to is, comment. It, 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 is very, it is very sad. and. And that is something that has happened in, in the world. And how did that come to pass? Um, I think it came to pass because we became so materialistic right. in, that, in that sense. Um, parents in themselves and the whole world, you and me, mm. everybody, you know, we kind of put children second. Mm -hmm. We're not loving them and caring for them enough. We're not giving them enough of examples of love that, in a sense, children think that the right thing to be is to be cold-hearted, is to be bitter. I, I see so much of it, you know, um, and, and that, we have to change that. We have to bring love back into the world. We, it's important because it's you and me that have to do it. Yeah. It's, it's all of us. Um, in order to, you know, make this world a better place, you know, we do treat children very badly. Yeah, well, we we bad don't teach them. We this. have a very bad track, even here in this country. That's particularly. You know, yeah. um, we, we have children homeless. We even have children going hungry. Yeah. You know, and, you know, we have children that aren't, you know, the, our government or, or we allow our government to um, not allow them to be educated properly, to give them every opportunity in, in the world. And you talk about celebrities having a negative effect on. Yeah, I think, I think celebrities need to actually wake up a little bit yes. and start to realize that young people, very young people are watching them. And that's another reason why 
why an awful lot of young people are losing self-love because so, they think they have to be like the celebrity yeah. or that one day they have to be like them. Okay, and where does the, the angel element of, of, this, of your story come into this? Because what you're saying is very common sense and, and, yeah. and makes a lot of sense. Um, but uh, where, where, where do you bring the angels into the equation? Into, into the equation? Yeah. The way I would bring the angel into equation is that every single person has a guardian angel and every single human being has a soul. And what I had said before, this, your soul is pure love yes. and that love can't be destroyed or diluted in, an, in any way. And we, we have to remember to, to love ourselves more and let that love out. Like I remember the first time the angel showing me love, it was between my parents. Yes. And say my dad was there, my mom was here, there was that distance. Yeah. And the angel saying, you know, pay attention. And I, I seen what was like this mist coming from my parents. The only way I, could, I can describe it, mm -hmm. but it's coming from the soul, from every part of them. Mm -hmm. And it was crystal clear and it just sparkled like ice. But the most wonderful thing was, and I even smile at it now, is, is that when, when, when that touched and intertwined, both my parents, and it came from my mom as well, yeah. both of them could feel the love of each other. Yeah. You know, and we need more of that love out in the world. Is it exhausting being, a, a, um, I don't know if the right word is conduit, but, but being somebody who the angel speaks to, and it, 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 does it take its toll on you? I mean, I, 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 I believe that you have, like it, it would affect friendship that you Yeah, I, 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 I suppose um, God has, in one sense, never allowed me to have a great amount of friends. You know, even as a child, it well, was always that, limited. I, I don't know. I, I believe it is, in one sense, so I wouldn't have become contaminated by the world in that in So there's that a purity way. to your... To I, your I, I don't know. This is just... You're interpreting yeah, it. Yes, no, I yeah, understand that. Yeah, you I know, in that. That, in that way. And... Um, I, I really don't don't know. Yeah, do you see it as yeah. a privilege or a burden? Um, I don't see it as a privilege because you have a soul, you have a guardian angel, um, and so so has every everyone else, whether yeah. you're good or bad. So, and I don't feel it as a burden because if you can change one person's life, you know, or save a child's life, yes, um, that's what life is about. And it's is about reaching and helping others. And when you see, like your 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 yeah. book and your, if you mm. like your message, it's, it's number one in the UK and number one in our phenomenal interest in it, a huge popularity mm. of it. Um, what, what what do you attribute that popularity to, Lorna? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It was just when I was a child and even a teenager and an adult, the angels used to say that one day I would write about God and us, and I laughed at them because I couldn't read or write. Yeah. And I, I can still I can read now, but not a huge amount. Um. You know, and, and they said the books will be best sellers. But, but to me, it's, it's, it's about changing people's lives. It was like the father who came to me one day and said, you know, he was absolutely shocked when his son said to him, you know, with a piggy bank, Dad, if I pay you, will you spend time with me? He said it gave him a wake up call. Yeah. You know, it shattered him that utterly. Yeah, it you do. know. And already I'm hearing back from, I have to say, fathers. You know, the other day I, I met a father, it was just after the book launch, and I was in Dublin on, yeah. I think you call it Grafton Street, and a father wheeling a child and another child. He just stopped me and said, Lorna, thank you. Yeah, simple as that. Well, look, thank, that. thank you for coming to see us, and continue good luck with what you do. Thank you. Lorna Byrne, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Lorna. Lauren's book, uh, Love from Heaven, is in shops now. We do